Thank you for joining this edition of News Today, a series where we briefly discuss and analyze important news of the day. Without delay, let's explore the headlines first. PM has addressed program on 200th birth anniversary of Maharishi Dayanand Saraswati. Union government announces inaugural edition of National Creators Award. An action taken report on India's neighborhood first policy has been presented to Lok Sabha. Standing Committee on Agriculture, Animal Husbandry and Food Processing presented Promotion of Climate Resilient Farming Report. Standing Committee on Labor, Textiles and Skill Development released a report on development and promotion of jute industry. Parliamentary Standing Committee on Health and Family Welfare released report on review of National Ayush Mission. Starting with the first news. PM has addressed program on 200th birth anniversary of Maharishi Dayanand Saraswati. Let's start by first knowing about Maharishi Dayanand Saraswati. Born at Morbi in Kathiawar, he was a philosopher and a social reformer. His original name was Mul Shankar. He was a disciple of Swami Virajananda and also he was the founder of Arya Samaj. Now let's have a look at his key contributions. In terms of religious reforms, he denounced idolatry and ritualistic worship, preached respect and reverence for other human beings. He believed in the infallible authority of Vedas and gave the slogan of back to Vedas. If we talk about the social reforms made by him, then he claimed that caste is not supposed to be hereditary but rather on the basis of an individual's talents and disposition. He was against the practice of untouchability and advocated Vedic education for all castes. Also, he opposed child marriage and forced widowhood and campaigned for women's education. Politically, he gave the call for Swarajya as India for Indians in 1876 and favored a political system based on enlightened monarchy. His literary works comprises of Satyarth Prakash, Ved Bhashya Bhumika and Ved Bhashya. Further, if we talk about contemporary relevance of Dayanand Saraswati teachings, then he advocated a value-based education which emphasizes universal truths, humanism and work for common welfare. He also stressed upon developing a scientific temper and rational thinking as he led crusades against superstitions and orthodoxy. Also, he supported eradication of discrimination based on caste, creed and sect. Moving on to the next news. The Union Government announces inaugural edition of National Creators Award. The National Creators Award aims to celebrate diverse voices and talents shaping India's growth and cultural narrative and driving positive social change in India's digital creator economy. If we talk about the digital creator economy, it refers to a segment of the economy driven by individuals who create content, products or services and monetize them through various digital platforms. Let us first start by understanding about National Creators Award. This award features a wide array of categories recognizing excellence and impact across various domains including storytelling, social change advocacy, environmental sustainability and education. Its selection process is through a combination of jury and public votes. It is spearheaded by My GOV India. Now let us further discuss the current state of the creator economy. There are over 80 million creators and knowledge professionals in India. Also, there are over 1,50,000 professional content creators in India who are able to monetize their services effectively. As the creator economy is growing rapidly in India, let us understand the reason behind the same. The improved access to smartphones, rapid rise in internet usage and globalization of content consumption acts as a major reason for the growth of the creators. The social media landscape is booming rapidly which provides better monetization opportunities. The adoption of remote and hybrid work is allowing enough time and resources to creators further disrupting the formal employment. Lastly, during the COVID-19 pandemic, the creativity of individuals experienced unrestrained and widespread revival, particularly in vernaculars across different verticals. Moving on, let us discuss about the various opportunities of creator economy. For individuals, the diversification of income streams, creative expression, flexible work model and reach to global audience will act as a benefit. For businesses, this growth will provide cost-effective and organic marketing and community building. Lastly, for society and economy, the cultural expression, social mobilization, skill development and entrepreneurial mindset will be a beneficial factor. Though this industry is growing rapidly, it is also facing some challenges, namely authenticity and integrity concerns, mental health and burnout due to excessive competition, gatekeeping and algorithmic biases of platforms. 
Moving on to the next news. An action taken report on India's neighborhood first policy has been presented to Lok Sabha. Let's first understand about neighborhood first policy. This policy aims to forge strong neighborhood relations based on consultative, non-reciprocal and outcome oriented approach. It focuses on delivering benefits like greater connectivity, improved infrastructure, stronger development cooperation in various sectors, security and broader people to people contacts. There is also the 5S principle of neighborhood engagement which includes samman, samvad, shanti, samriddhi and sanskriti. Now let's have a look at the significance of neighborhood first policy. For India, it ensures regional stability and improved security, economic growth through improved trade and connectivity, countering external influence in the region such as China and enhanced soft power. In terms of region, it offers shared prosperity, peaceful resolution of outstanding disputes, strengthened multilateralism through regional or sub-regional organizations such as SAC and Beamstick. Further now, let's discuss and understand the key recommendations of the report. The Ministry of External Affairs should establish a cell to bring convergence with different ministries on neighborhood first policy. Also, periodic review of bilateral and multilateral or regional relationship framework should be ensured. Further, strengthening joint project monitoring committees and oversight mechanisms should be acknowledged. Moreover, monitoring demographic changes caused by illegal migration in border areas in coordination with the Union Home Ministry to curb terrorism and illegal migration. Lastly, synergy between neighborhood first policy and act ace policy must be ensured to improve connectivity, development and security in India's northeast. Moving on to the next news. Standing Committee on Agriculture, Animal Husbandry and Food Processing presented Promotion of Climate Resilient Farming report. The report highlighted that climate resilient farming is imperative given the susceptibility of Indian agriculture to climate change. Let's first start by understanding climate resilient farming. Climate resilient farming or agriculture is an approach which includes the sustainable use of existing natural resources through crop and livestock production systems to further achieve long-term and higher productivity along with farm incomes under climate variabilities. Now, let us further discuss about the needs of climate resilient farming. In crops and horticulture, the yield is expected to decrease. For instance, rain-fed rice yields in India will decline by 20% in 2050 and 47% in 2080. Also, hailstorms occurring during the flowering and fruit set stage result in lesser mango production. Moving on to the livestock, the rising temperatures may affect livestock physiology and energy expenditure of livestock, reducing milk, meat, wool and drought power output. Lastly. For the fishery sector, one degree temperature rise can disrupt fish survival, migrations and habitats altering stocks with potential permanent displacement to new areas. Further, let's discuss about the key recommendations provided for the issues. National Agriculture Disaster Management Authority or NADMA as the creation of single nodal agency at national level to deal with issues of climate change will further benefit the cause. KVK 2.0 or Krishi Vigyan Kendra, the transformation of KVKs with technologies such as artificial intelligence for better farmer support. Other recommendations have also been given. The technologies such as big data analytics will further optimize irrigation schedules and promotion of carbon market in agriculture. The government has also taken several initiatives for climate resilient farming in India. National Initiative on Climate Resilient Agriculture the scheme enhances the resilience of Indian agriculture covering crops, livestock and fisheries. National Mission of Sustainable Agriculture This initiative helps to promote the judicious management of available resources. Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sichai Yojana The scheme promotes micro or drip irrigation. Paramparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana It further promotes climate smart practices like organic farming. Other than these, Few more initiatives like Green India Mission and Soil Health Card Scheme have also been taken. In our next news, Standing Committee on Labour, Textiles and Skill Development released a report on development and promotion of jute industry. Let's start by first discussing about the jute industry in India. Jute industry in India accounts for 70% of the world's jute production. It employs around 3.7 lakh workers directly. Around 90% of the production is consumed locally and about 73% of the country's jute industries are concentrated in West Bengal. Now let's understand the challenges faced by jute industries. 
There is a lack of modernization as it is dependent over obsolete machinery and less integration of advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence. Also, availability of raw materials is one major concern as area under jute cultivation has declined around 1.7 lakh hectare between 2013-14 to 2021-22. Further, there is less emphasis on products such as jute geotextiles due to low value addition. Additionally, the mandatory jute packaging guidelines are not followed by many industries. Also, there is a lack of impetus from states to procure jute products in feasible areas like geotextiles. Lastly, some other concerns like shortage of skilled labor force, closure of existing factories and low export further contribute to the challenges. Ahead, if we talk about some key recommendations of the report, then these include promoting modernization, equipping industries with digital moisture meters to improve the quality, preparing comprehensive policy for reviving the closed mills and setting up new mills, devise suitable scheme in consultation with the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship to minimize the shortage of skilled workers. The government has also introduced some key initiatives such as National Jute Development Program which is an umbrella scheme for development of jute industry. National Jute Board has been constituted as per National Jute Board Act 2008. Jute Packaging Materials Compulsory Use in Packaging Commodities Act 1987 enacted for the compulsory use of jute packaging material and Jute Mark logo which was launched in 2022 for branding and positioning of Indian jute globally. Moving on to the last news for the day. Parliamentary Standing Committee on Health and Family Welfare released report on review of National Ayush Mission. Let us first start by understanding about the National Ayush Mission or NAM. NAM was launched in 2014 and aims to provide Ayush healthcare services throughout the country by strengthening and improving Ayush healthcare services. It is a centrally sponsored scheme by the Ministry of Ayush as the nodal ministry. Also it includes traditional ayush services namely ayurveda yoga and naturopathy unani siddh and homeopathy coming back to the report it highlighted that number of beneficiaries availing ayush services through ayush health and wellness centers or ahwcs saw an increase from 1.50 crores in the year 2020 to 21 8.42 crores in the year 2022 to 23 now Let us further analyze the components of the National Ayush Mission. These are Ayush Gram, Ayush Public Health Programs, Supply of Essential Drugs, Collocation of Ayush Facilities at PHCs, CHCs and DHs, Ayush Health and Wellness Centers and upgradation of existing standalone government Ayush hospitals. The scheme is also facing several challenges starting with the implementation 69% of the integrated Ayush hospitals already approved are yet to be completed. Additionally, the separate departments of Ayush are not open in some states and union territories. Finalizing the state annual action plan and its approval process usually takes longer, which further delays the whole process. Multiple roles of an organization. Same entity, particularly the NAM directorate, performs various roles of the policy formulation, regulation, financing purchasing and provisioning further adding to the concern looking at the challenges several recommendations have been provided in the report namely the implementation of stricter good manufacturing practices gmp and good agricultural practices gap for ayush products is advised it is also recommended to persuade private insurance companies to include ayush treatments like panchkarma in their list of approved treatments lastly extending the period of the scheme beyond financial year 24 for at least 5 more years the personality in news for today is dr m s swaminathan recently dr swaminathan has been conferred with the bharat ratna now let us have a look at his contributions he was the architect of india's green revolution during the 1960s along with norman borlaug he developed high yielding varieties of wheat Also he promoted knowledge skill and technological empowerment of women in agriculture as head of the national commission on farmers 2004 to 6 he recommended minimum support price for farmers based on the comprehensive cost of production he was conferred with the first world food prize laureate in the year 1987 and the ss bhatnagar award in the year 1961 he exhibited the values of leadership scientism compassion and dedication to public service 
As we conclude today's main news, let's take a look at some quick updates. RBI is planning for tokenization of assets and government bonds under its wholesale central bank digital currency pilot project. Tokenization is the process of issuing a digital representation of an asset using distributed ledger technology or blockchain. These assets can include tangible assets like real estate, financial assets like equities or bonds, and intangible assets like intellectual property and identity. Great Indian Bustard has not been spotted at Rolapadu Wildlife Sanctuary in Andhra Pradesh for years. Great Indian Bustard is endemic to the Indian subcontinent and is found in Central India, Western India and Eastern Pakistan. Its major population is confined mostly to Rajasthan and Gujarat. Its IUCN status is critically endangered and it is listed in Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act 1972 and in Appendix 1 of Sites. A new proposed railway line passing through Bandipur National Park has evoked protests over its ecological impact. Bandipur National Park is located in Karnataka and is part of Western Ghats Mountains, Biogeography Zone and Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. It shares boundary with three other national parks, namely Nagarhol National Park, Wayanad National Park and Mudumalai National Park. During the winter months, American alligators go into a state of brumation, a type of hibernation. Hibernation is a period of inactivity that allows animals to survive when food is scarce and the weather is harsh. Brumation is a period of dormancy exhibited by reptiles and amphibians in colder months. National Aerospace Laboratories in Bangalore successfully completed the first test of a solar-powered pseudo-satellite. Pseudo-satellites or high-altitude pseudo-satellites are unmanned air vehicles that can fly at altitudes of 18 to 20 kilometers from the ground and can hold fixed positions. There are two types of HAPS. First is the lighter-than-air HAPS that rely on buoyancy to lift off and stay afloat. And another is heavier-than-air HAPS with a more conventional takeoff method. A new niche technological solution of open radio access network based stations has been developed by IIITB Comet Foundation. Open radio access network is the key part of a mobile network system that uses cellular radio connections to link individual devices to other parts of a network. It comprises antenna which transmits and receives signals to and from our smartphones or other compatible devices. Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has launched first phase of the biannual nationwide mass drug administration campaign to eliminate the lymphatic filariasis. Lymphatic filariasis is one of the neglected tropical diseases. It impairs the lymphatic system and can lead to the abnormal enlargement of body parts. Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India launched Science for Women, a technology and innovation portal. It aims to create a single online portal representing Indian women and girls in STEM. Its objective is to scale up efforts to exponentially include every Indian woman in science and enable reliable long-term research on equality, diversity and inclusivity. Before we go, it's time to put your knowledge to test in today's segment of Test Your Learning. Thank you for joining us. We hope you have enjoyed this edition of News Today. To get the answers to today's quiz and to download the PDF of News Today, make sure to check out the links in the description below. 